Hello. Uh, today we will discuss uh, the concept of contract costing. Right. So, in the previous sessions, we discussed about the job costing and the service costing. Now we will discuss the concept of the contract costing. So, uh, what is uh, a contract co uh, contract costing and uh, so what is contract costing and uh, what is contract first of all, right? So, the contract is usually, so uh, a contract is usually assigned by a contractee to a contractor to construct a building, uh, roads, bridge, plant, etc. for an agreed amount which is called contract price, right? So, there is a contractor, a person or a firm which has been awarded a contract for construction of a building, plant, etc. There is a contractee who is a party who has given a contract uh, to a contractor to complete a big job. Contract price is the price agreed to be paid by a contractee to a contractor as a consideration for completion of a job, right? So, uh, these are the basic definitions of a contract. Now, uh, the payment of a contract, right, the payment of a contract price can be made in two ways. One is, uh, it can be made in lump sum, right? So, full payment of contract price is made in lump sum either at the beginning or on completion of the contract as per terms and progressive payment, it is made in installments as fixed percentage of the value of work certified by an architect, engineer, surveyor of the contractee. This certification is done on regular intervals, for example, 40% uh, work completed, 80% uh, work completed like that, okay. So, uh, uh, contract costing is basically a special type of job costing, right. So, uh, with a few differences, what are the differences? First difference is size, size is contract is a big job, right. Uh, like construction of a flyover, construction of a, a river bridge, uh, etc. And more time period is required to complete a contract than a job, right. And activities are performed within the factory area in a job, right. But in uh, the same are performed outside factory area in case of a contract. So, when Larson and Tubro is building a flyover, it is outside the factory, it may be on a urban locality, on a road, etc. Contract costing is used by building contractors, ship builders, right, and others to ascertain the cost of a contract and find profit earned and loss incurred in a contract, right. And job costing, which we discussed earlier, it is usually for uh, uh, for uh, for calculating the cost of a job work, uh, usually by uh, manufacturing concern, right? Uh, and in a uh, contract costing, the first thing which is to be you know uh, uh, done is the uh, construction of a contract account, right? Contract account is a nominal account prepared to calculate profit or loss, profit or loss on a contract at the end of accounting year or on completion, right. A separate contract account is prepared each contract in the books of contractor in general ledger or in the contract ledger in case a large number of contracts are undertaken by a contractor. So, contract account is debited with all direct and indirect expenditure incurred in relation to the contract, right. So, now uh, there is a contractor who has got a contract for construction of say a uh, flyover, right, in a city, right. So, what he can do? He can create a contract account in his books of accounts and in which he can calculate the profit or loss made on the contract. And this contract account is debited with all direct and indirect expenditure and credited uh, on the completion of the contract. The balance amount represents the profit earned or loss incurred on the contract and is transferred to profit and loss account. So, contract costing some terms. So, for, uh, first term is the cost plus contract. 
What is a cost plus contract? It is a type of contract in which contractee agrees to pay the contractor the cost price of the work done plus an agreed percentage thereof by way of overhead expenses and profit, right? So this is cost plus. Then uh, subcontract is in certain cases, contractor may entrust some portion of the work to a subcontractor, for example, electricity fitting, wood, wooden work, etc., etc. This cost of subcontractor is debited to the contract account. Extras, uh, what is extra? In certain cases, the contractee may require additional work to be done or alterations to be made in the work originally agreed under the contract. These are called extras, right? And contract is required to pay for them. If extra work is substantial, a separate account should be maintained for the same. The extra work is not substantial, it may be debited to the contract account and price charged for the same be credited to the contract account. So, cost escalation clause, what is cost escalation clause? In certain cases, may be an escalation clause in the contract. As per this clause, the case prices of items of raw materials, labor, etc. specified in the contract increase during the execution of the contract beyond a certain limit over the prevailing prices at the time of signing agreement. The contract price will be suitably adjusted as per terms, right? And the amount is credited to the contract account, right? Uh, and by contract account cost escalation. There may be a penalty also. If a penalty is charged by the contractee from the contractor uh, for defective work or delay in the execution, the amount may be deducted from the contract price. Work in progress. What is work in progress? If the contract is incomplete, then the value of work done on the contract on a particular date is called work in progress. So it includes what? It includes uh, work certified and work uncertified. What is work certified? It is the value of the work so far done and approved by the contractor's architect or surveyor or engineer who issues a, a certificate stating the value of the work done so far, okay? And what is work uncertified? Work done after the date of certification up to the last day of the accounting year, but not certified or approved by the contract is architect or surveyor is called work uncertified. It is usually valued on the basis of prime cost or works cost. So uh, how the uh, you know uh, materials and plant costs are treated. Material, uh, so this is the format. So uh, this is the debit side and this is the uh, credit side of the contract account, right? So on the debit side, the items are material issued from store, material purchased, material transferred from other side and on the credit side is material returned to store, material sold at cost, materials transferred to other site, material lost or destroyed and materials at site, right? And uh, here plant issued from store, plant purchased, plant transferred from other side, higher, higher charges of plant and plant returned to store plant sold, plant transferred to other site, plant lost, destroyed and plant at site. So uh, this, is, this is the structure of the contract account, right, okay. So uh, how, the tr uh, how the labor expenses over its and contract price can be treated? So labor paid, this is contract account, again debit and credit, right. Labor paid plus outstanding here on the debit, expenses paid plus outstanding debit, overheads paid plus outstanding debit, and here is the contractor's account that is the contract price, right? 
Now, if this contract price is more than all these costs, right? So, this side you can see their costs, right? Then you, you will make profit, right? Otherwise, you will make the loss, okay? Fine. So, uh, incomplete contract that is the contract which is partly completed, we, we can show it under work in progress. Under the work in progress, as we discussed earlier, so there can be two categories one is what is certified, and the other part is uncertified, right? And this is the profit carried uh, forward from the carried down from the uh, you know from the earlier part. So, if uh, if uh, uh, you know uh, this profit and loss account, this balance which you will get, right, that is the profit transferred, and then we can show it as reserve. Okay. So, incomplete contract calculation of profit and reserve, if there is a loss, if there is a loss, then the whole amount of loss irrespective of work certified shall be transferred to costing PNL account. If the work certified is less than one fourth of the contract price, no profit shall be transferred to the profit and loss account. Right. So, uh, how to calculate the profit and reserve? If work certified is one fourth or more, one fourth or more, but less than half of the contract price, one third of the total estimated profit as reduced by the percentage of cash received shall be transferred to PNL account. Right. So, profit is equal to total estimated profit into one third into cash received by work certified. So, this is the formula. If the work certified is half or more of the contract price, two third of the total estimated profit as reduced by the percentage of cash received shall be transferred to the PNL account. Formula is profit is equal to total estimated profit into two third into cash received by work certified. So, and if the contract is you know near completion, right, we can simply calculate like this profit to be transferred to uh, PNL account is uh, notional profit into work certified by contract price, right. And uh, here is notional profit into two third, right, to cash received by work certified. So, uh, if the contract is near completion, the first find the total estimated cost. So, you need to find out the total estimated cost, which is equal to cost incurred plus estimated cost to be incurred to complete the contract. Okay. Then find the estimated profit, which is equal to contract price minus total estimated cost on the basis of total estimated profit that is contract price minus total estimated cost. Now, profit uh, to be transferred to PNL account is estimated profit into work certified by contract price, right? And B, uh, estimated profit into work certified by contract price into cash received by work certified, okay? So, uh, so, this is the formula for calculation of profit and reserve. Thank you.